I'm Jordan. And I'm Brad. And we're the co-hosts of Shame On You podcast, our journey to zero gay shame. Today we'll be answering some questions from two different bowls. These are hard questions and these are soft questions. Who knows what that means? We'll figure it out. Yeah. Should I go first? Yeah. Do you want to start with hard? I, I'm trying not to look because I can see them. Who's one of your most memorable guests? I'm gonna go with Marcus Cage. Uh, Marcus Cage was a big crush on him. Yeah, he's adorable. Marcus Cage was a is a heterosexual man that does gay porn. Heterosexual, we'll say, it's a little bit fluid. At a this loose point. term. He was heterosexual when recorded with us, and now things are different. <laughs> <laughs> I always like when we bring on um, older gentlemen from the gay community just to kind of learn about our history and um, yeah, how much things have changed. And how uh, much they haven't. And how much they haven't. Oh, my turn. Next. Should I go soft? Sure. Oh my God. Okay. What's the most surprising thing someone has asked you on a date? Oh my God. I've had so many bad dates. I'm going to kind of answer this one a little bit off. One time I went on a date with a guy and his boyfriend showed up. I did not know he had a boyfriend. I went, I went on a date. I met a guy at a party, do you remember? In the middle of the date, he kept looking at his phone and I was like, what's going on? And he's like, oh, nothing. He's like, let's go get a drink. And then we went to get a drink and there was a man sitting there and I said, who's this? And he said, well, this is my boyfriend. And I said, great. And I said, why are we on a date? And he said, well, we're going to Cuba next week to give it one last shot, but um, I thought- <laughs> That's where you I restart you were, the romance. Yeah, I thought you were cool, so I took you out. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, the most surprising thing someone's done for me on a date was a helicopter tour around oh, Toronto yes, Island. Oh yes, this is a good story. Like, I showed up, um, and he's like, I have a ton of surprises for you today. And I was like, okay. And the first thing was a couple's massage. First date. I thought you were gonna do one of these. No, I like this one. What oh. are some of the messages you've gotten from listeners besides dick pics? So we started our podcast by um, the first episode we in jest said, please send us dick pics. That was probably the, one of the worst mistakes worst. of my life, I'd <laughs> say. <laughs> Ranks up there. Well, some of the actual nice messages yeah, we've we received get, yes. is like people that have like come out because of the podcast, things that have like ended shitty relationships. Gone I don't know. Prep. We've got, yeah, we've got. We had a priest come out because of the podcast and leave his, I guess, career. Yeah, and career. we had a, also another guy come out um, because his, I think he's bisexual, and he told, well, he told his wife basically. Yeah. yeah. The other day, um, I think because we are so outrageous and so out there, we go a mile. People take a foot, so it's kind of like people are inspired by the shamelessness of the podcast. <laughs> What? What podcasts are you into right now? Our own? Um, I've recently gotten into uh, Nicole Byer. She has a, a podcast called Why Won't You Date Me? And it's she's actually funny. pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, she's fucking hilarious. What have you learned about yourself while doing the podcast? I was someone who traditionally did not like, and need to be liked or want to be liked. And then, you know, you're getting so much hate from different directions and you're trying to control it. But also praise, like we're getting a lot of that too. Yeah, and you're just trying to, and so that's the thing. But I think, I think what we both learned is that the way we speak in this unbridled, filthy, raw nature is very rare. We didn't realize how we were, we spoke differently than everyone else. Yeah. Um, and it's going well. It's going well. Who was the hardest person you had to come out to and why? The hardest, well, and last people I came out to were my parents. I grew up in a pretty religious family, um, like Catholic religious, and I don't know, they always just had this kind of like heteronormative attitude, like you should find like a girl and settle down and start a family and all this stuff. So I just didn't want to disappoint, I guess. Like I came out to them and it was like, their reaction was great and fine and they're amazingly supportive people. Um, but yeah, they're the ones that I feared coming out to the most. I think my sister was one of the first people, my older sister was one of the first people I came out to. So we were hanging out and she was talking about my, my ex-boyfriend that we dated for four and a half years and she said, um, I heard a rumor that Paulo is gay. Is it true? And I was sitting on the couch and I said, yes. And she thought we were best friends at the time. And then I said, and then she said, oh, how do you know? And I said, well, I've been fucking him for four and a half years. <laughs> and 
and she said, <laughs> she started laughing. And then I, and then there was a look on my face like, no, I, like, I'm, I'm serious. Su I suck dick. And she then started crying because I think she it was just so emotionally, it was, she was, she said, she was sad that I had to hide that relationship from the family. Because, you know, he would come over for like dinners. And my mom would be like, you're like a son to me, but never knew. What's your In Your Feelings song? I do love Dermot Kennedy. Oh my God, I was going to say that. I really like oh, the Oh, Taylor XX. Swift. I, well, whenever I have a breakup, I'm like, I need Taylor Swift. Always. But like, do you she want. She got me through everything. Do you want to listen to like, sad breakup songs when you're in a sad breakup I mood? marinate in the pain and I wonder if I'll ever be happy again. And then the answer is no. <gasps> Do you... Okay, my turn. Any sex toy recommendations? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I always appreciate a good flashlight. Uh, I like a prostate massager. Are there any episodes you've told your family not to listen to? Okay, so my mom listens to the podcast. She turns it off when I get too aggressive on the ass eating talk. Which um, is every episode. I tell my parents to do that. I'm just like, buyer beware. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not ashamed of anything that's on there. You just may not want to hear it. Yeah. When was the first time you had your heart broken? Oh, this year? <laughs> I haven't had a lot of heartbreak in my life, luckily, either. Mainly because I don't really date people. But the one that really got me was when I was seeing uh, Frenchie. Mm. Um, I was seeing him for like almost a year and only to find out that he was living with a woman, his girlfriend, the whole time. In his defense, you did fart while he was jerking off. <laughs> What's been the hardest thing to talk about on the podcast? For me, it was my breakup. I mean, I'm generally more of a private person. I don't know if you can tell from this video, but Jordan's the more outrageous one. Mm. So yeah, it's hard for me to share a lot of like deeply personal experiences. There's an episode called Adrian the Stripper where right, we interviewed a stripper that I went on a date with. I mean, who hasn't? Most people. At the beginning of the episode, the first 12 minutes, it was about a, three days after my dad died. And I sort of, it was the final confirmation that I wasn't gonna get an apology because we were estranged. And so that's what was so, I was so overcome with emotion. So the first 12 minutes is basically me having a mental breakdown, bawling. And then I just go, okay, and now the stripper. And it was a nice change. It showed we could do both. We could have an emotional <laughs> breakdown and then just interview a stripper. What's the best grinder profile you've seen? Oh God. There's a lot of terrible ones. I've been off grinding for a long time now, but the ones that always make me laugh are the ones that just say like, human toilet, like yeah. use me as your toilet. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, Dad? does that? Oh, we're almost, this we're last done. one. We're done, last one. Why are you stacking the ball? I work here. <laughs> uh, who's your favorite Insta thirst trap? I don't follow like hot people on Instagram because it just makes me feel shitty about myself. Same, I stopped <laughs> doing it. Like why would I, why would I see you having a great life? No, so I mostly follow like, funny meme accounts and stupid shit like that. I think we're done. And we're done, and that's a day. So tune into our <laughs> podcast every Thursday. Shame on you. I don't know, that's basically that's it. it. Yeah. I think we just sold the podcast. Shameonyou.com. Really well.